Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, today we're starting off in a simulation we checked out recently. This system is called the Aquarium. It's submitted by the user Archduck7 and the reason for that, the reason why we're here, is because today's system is a sequel to this system here. So if you remember this one, it had that enormous brown dwarf in the background. It had all these weird objects and it was a really, really bizarre piece of art. Um, yeah, pretty funky and unique. So, we now have the Aquarium Aftermath to check out here. So let's go ahead and check it out. So yeah, Archdutch, let's see what they prepared for us. Here we go. Whoa, <laughs> what's happened? Oh my god. Oh man. What is that? Brown Dwarf has blown up. What has happened here? Okay, Ooh. Since you seem to enjoy the aquarium, I've been requested to make a follow-up. But first, a recap. In the distant part of the universe, a fluctuation in quantum physics causes an area of space a thousand light years in diameter to suddenly become filled with water. Gravity pulls it into an orb and strange things begin to form in the centre. Now the natural law and order of the universe has corrected this error, causing chaos and confusion. Many objects have been heavily impacted or outright destroyed, while others peacefully watch in the distance. What was once a beautiful and unique system full of mysterious oddities is now a space of destruction and collapse. Explore the ruins if you so desire. Ooh. The simulation comes equipped with an artificial flashlight and some space goggles. Feel free to equip you with these goggles at any time. There you go. Ooh. What has happened? It's wrecked. There's carnage. What is this? Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Do not unpause the simulation. Oh, yeah. Right. So, the thing itself. A dim brown dwarf. The lantern is a shadow of its former self. 100 masses of Jupiter, 1.6 in radius. First up, we have Icarus here. This capable flame in Zeus is always extremely close to its home star. It has a very high temperature. Additionally, the collapse of the swarm is surface now visible. It appears very hot to the naked eye, although this may be the cause of its star. Oh, yeah. You've got the giant ring area here, which looks like a complete wreck. Next up, we've got this world here. What has happened to you? Oh my god. While it has cooled down, the crater from its impact remains. With the, the blinding glare of the swarm gone, we can analyse it in further detail. The rings boast perfect circular symmetry, and some rings are mysteriously perfect flat. Pronounce click, this planet. Okay. Cool. Next up, we've got Sahara here. So it's replaced Fansic as the archipelago planet. Its south pole is now a barren desert, actually living up to its name, and the rest of the surface is vast oceans and island chains. Okay. We have the swarm. It turns out a sphere is significantly less stable than a simple ring. Because of this, the swarm has fallen apart, causing chaos and collisions throughout the inner part of the system. We can now properly identify Icarus now. Okay. Very good. So we have Fansic over here. It's a dead planet. Oh my god. Doomed, an unknown object crashed into it, likely an asteroid from the swarm, causing its surface to heat up to thousands of degrees. Any life that existed before is long gone now. Speaking of gone, where are the uh, Putinias? Pronounced fansick. Yeah. Okay. Right. So then we have the binary ice giants. We'll go down there next. So here they are. What's going on here? That was called the big, wasn't it? As a whole, seems to be fairly unchanged and all that has happened. Um, so one of them is a new moon, um, although the gravity influence and bloodshot may disrupt its orbit in the future. Okay, so there's the moon there. Swarmoid. A captured moon becomes its origin. It's believed to be a member of the swarm that was captured. Okay, there it is. Bloodshot, the other gas giant there. I don't think there's any changes here. If this system is hell, then bloodshot is Hades. Its unique colour perfectly matches with the new vibe of the system. Besides, camouflage and all better, it is unaffected. So these guys have gone off fairly unscathed. We've got this object here. So a primal energy must have been hidden under Talus's ice. It is now taking up a thick, obscuring atmosphere and glows a bright, godly yellow. It is not it is not under any intense pressure of heat, so it is unknown why it glows. Very cool. Okay. So then heading to this one here. Giganto. Seen some collisions. The super rocky Giganto has stood strong, though the chaos it took two asteroid collisions like a champ and held onto its ring system. Why can't we all be like Giganto? Polarity. After suffering from a devastating impact, polarity heavily resembles a click. Think about it. They're both charred, ash covered wells. Coincidence, I think not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Has a moon as well. So, Symbolica. 
It's proof that life can thrive in the harshest conditions. Repeated collisions onto polarity spawned it in a Haspel submoon. This orbit is unstable, but the moon itself is here to stay. Very good. Nice. Moving on to Idel over here. What is going on here? Woohoo! This is a planet that I was both dreading and impatiently waiting to revisit. Especially its closest moon, Aprokuta, has been destroyed by tidal forces. The resulting bombardment has permanently scarred the once beautiful ice giant. I think this is the one I said the uh, moon was too close, wasn't it? So you can see the remains of where that moon was. Or Kizu here, the moon. Also very close to the parent still. Increased heat induced by the destruction of the other moon has managed to heat up enough to grow grass. When one door closes, another one opens. Nice. Then we have new Apruka. We received backlash from some users who complained about this object being named Europa, a major moon from the solar system. To prevent any further confusion, the moon needed a new name. Seeing as another moon no longer exists, we just did a switch through to solve the problem. <laughs> cool. Okay. See the wreckage out here. Okay. Next up, we got this one, Cori. One of the many ice jumps in the system. Somehow, I neglected to mention its appearance in my last review. I have since grown to like Cori's simplistic yet calm in white and blue bands. Pronounced Cori, actually. There you go. Then we have Vil here. Somehow its mass and pressures have increased exponentially, resulting in the entire surface being covered in grass. I have no idea how this happened, and also I don't care at this point. <laughs> Pronounced evil minus the E. So this is just Vil. Yeah. There it is. Complete darkness about the goggles on. There you go. Okay. Moving on to Moors over here. Suggests it could possibly collide with Iris, although this is highly unlikely. It has no moons or rings and is essentially unchanged. Okay. Then we have Google over here. I've been stretched out slightly due to the gravitational tug of Deacon. They almost look like an eye now. Yikes. Pronounce Google. There it is. This is the Deacon. Pilot, uh, ugly moon orbiting a golden planet. Unfortunately, it hasn't changed at all, which means I still hate it and I like to say about it. Okay. There you go. Then we have Pole over here. A rocky planet with the most water in the entire system. Previously, the brown giant used to keep it partially melted at all times, but now it's completely frozen over. Alright. Iris over here. So its rings have been destroyed, and now has a highly elliptical orbit around the lantern. Simulation suggests it could potentially collide with Moors, Gogol, or Pole, although it is unlikely to happen anytime soon, if ever. So, ruined world. There you go. Then we have Ratta. So... So click, Moors, and Ratta are sort of triplets in a way that all oilless, well, similarly sized to Terra. Ratta stands out due to its unnatural orbit. Okay. Now we have what's left of the anomaly. This used to be the giant, um, the giant brown dwarf that's mysteriously been destroyed. Interesting. The giant brown dwarf is long gone. There's no reason why it's disappeared. Why? It briefly said at the start of the simulation about you know how natural natural science and stuff took over from this strange um, thing in the first place, but yeah, the Rand Wharf has collapsed and been destroyed. The mysteries of CV's surface have been revealed. Its composition suggests it could be an ice giant, but instead a rocky planet. All of the gases that should make up its atmosphere are in liquid form, coating the surface in an inky black. Homalo is a single moon of C slash V. How it went undetected all this time, no one knows. No matter, it's not very interesting anyway. Okay. Anything further away? Or is that it? Oh, very, very interesting. Okay, so the brown dwarf, the biggest collapse of it all is this. The anomaly. The unrealistically sized brown dwarf. What happened to it? Just the natural laws of physics just made it collapse in on itself. Let's go back to the original simulation quick, because they are tied. So, here it is again. This is what it used to look like. And there we go. There it is there, the anomaly. Yes, so. So, yeah. Assume we know what a brown dwarf is, quick. Now, expand that to 10% size of a red giant that caused the massive typical brown dwarf. Some objects exist more unusual than others. So, that's the anomaly. So, obviously... It it was too big. It probably just collapsed down and was destroyed. So Ratter used to orbit that as well, as you can see. Irish used to orbit it. But obviously that's been upset now this thing has been destroyed. So they're now orbiting the main centre instead. Interesting stuff. 
There's the chroma void again. Interesting indeed. So yeah, this thing was collapsed. The edge. Is that still in that new sim? We didn't see that. Is the edge still... Does the edge still exist? Let's see if we can find it. And even the background simulate or simulation colour changed from the blue to this black colour as well, the dark colour. Is that normally still in here somewhere? Is it just hard to spot? Let's see if we can find it. Let's just delete the particles so we can actually look around a little easier. Okay. What have we got? Now it looks like that thing is no longer in the simulation. Okay. So there's your lineup. All right. How very interesting how things have changed. Let's get your lineup of the objects. So you can see them properly in their true colours. The gold gas giant is quite nice. And Cory is quite a nice one as well. Looks pretty good. So there we are. But yeah, what do you guys think of the sequel? Make sure you uh, hope you check the first video out before watching this one. But um, yeah, pretty interesting. How things can change dramatically. And this is all that's left is this very miniature sized star here. Brown dwarf. Very, very cool. Okay, but yeah, there we are, everybody. So what do you think of that? Let me know down below in the comments. Inter an interesting one indeed. Again, a massive thank you, the creator, Archdux, for sending this in. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press that like button as well. Let us know what you think. And if you haven't as well, subscribe. Helps on our journey to 50,000 subscribers, everybody. We're less than 300 people away now. We are so close. So, yeah, really appreciate it as always. And yeah, that will send done, everybody. Make sure you guys all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.